Winemaking. What do I really need? I'm Greg. I'm Julie, and we're the Crafty Winers. So if you're just starting off uh, in your winemaking hobby, there are a lot of things that a lot of people recommend that you need to have to start making wine. And it can be confusing and a lot of things that other people think are uh, super important. We don't necessarily agree. So we're going to put forth our thoughts of what gear and what ingredients you should have before you start seriously trying to make wine. And you can really start with very few things, just some basic stuff, and it doesn't cost very much money. Most people don't have $1,000 laying around to go buy all the fancy wine making equipment, so we want to just give you an idea of the basics, and we'll add on from there of other fun things that you can have that make it a little easier as you go. So none of the stuff to start off with is expensive. Really nothing in the entire list is expensive, but if you try to go out and buy all of it, it does kind of end up hurting your pocketbook a little bit. <laughs> I do need to say that a lot of this is controversial. I made the mistake of posting my thoughts about this equipment list in a winemaking forum on Facebook, and I spent the whole next day trying to defend myself of how I didn't know I was doing, and a lot of people have very different thoughts. So this is our thoughts. <laughs> Take them or leave them. Just our thoughts. So we'll start getting through the list. We're starting off with equipment that we think you need, and a lot of these things you're already going to have in your kitchen. So you're not going to have to buy these things, although everything will have a link in our description. Most of the stuff comes from Amazon if you do need to buy it, but again, a lot of the stuff you're already going to have in your kitchen. So the most important thing we think in winemaking is the hydrometer. Which you probably don't have laying around in your kitchen, but they're not expensive. So this one is a plastic hydrometer. The glass ones are actually slightly cheaper. We'll have links for all of these things in the description of the video. Most of these things come from Amazon, including we got this from Amazon. What this does though, is it measures how much sugar is in the must or the wine juice that you're gonna ferment. The reason that that's important is because for one, you need to know what the ABV is, the uh, alcohol percentage at the end of the fermentation. This will let you know when the fermentation is done because the specific gravity, the reading that this takes doesn't change. And also, one of the dogs just farted and I just completely lost my train of thought. I made an ugly face too. This lets me know what sugars are in the wine juice before I start the process. And then at the end of the process, I can tell that it's done because the readings don't change anymore. So we're not going to get into a lot of detail about what this does, but this is important. And we have a video just about this and how to use it that we'll link above. And then this kind of goes along with it. It's a graduated cylinder. Also, you may not have this sitting around in your kitchen unless you're a chemist. I'm not, so this goes along with this. Put this in here. And then you put the wine juice in there till it starts floating and that's how you take your reading. You don't have to have one of these if you have something else that is tall enough for this to float in without oh, yeah. touching the sides or the bottom. You can skip this, but this is very cheap, so you may yeah. as well get one. Everybody has these measuring spoons. You just need a good assortment. And of course, most people have one of these. They don't work that well for turkey basters because if anybody's used this, and I use it to try to take grease out of meat, it leaks. But it works fine for the winemaking. If you don't have an airlock, uh, you're going to want some tubing to act as an airlock. And we'll explain that a little bit more when we, in, here in a minute when we show you the uh, possible vessels, something to plug the top of the jug with and to put the airlock or the tubing into is important. Also not expensive. And a spoon. And I'm sure everybody has one of these. It doesn't have to be slotted, but we like the slotted one though, because it doesn't create as much air. One that's easy to clean is somewhat important. Mm -hmm. This is a single piece silicone spoon and it's fairly easy to, to clean. So we're going to move this stuff off and show you the last part of the superior, the S tier of gear. So the tiers that we're using, I'll put up on the screen, uh, S is the superior. That's pretty much you have to have it, in our opinion, to make what we call wine. You might get lucky with uh, grape juice and you know a cup left out on your counter for a couple of weeks. But if you want to actually have control over the winemaking process and make sure that you make wine that's good, we think that you need to have what is in our S or superior class. So this is the round out the uh, S class for the equipment. You need to have something to ferment the wine in. 
and or rack the wine into. And again, if you don't understand these terms, we do have a lot of videos that'll teach you what these mean. So starting off with the, <laughs> for sure cheapest. the cheapest. <laughs> this came from Walmart. It was $5. Yep. It has a spout on it. It has a hole in the top. And it has a very, very, very lousy lid that does not hold liquid. So don't but, shake it. But it works as long as you're not shaking it. This is a, it's fine fermenter. In fact, we've got hobo wine that we're uh, in the middle of doing a video on right now. It's fermenting that we used this very container. What's nice about this is you can get a cork and fit it in the hole. And if, it's, uh, if it doesn't fit well, you can use saran wrap to make it tighter. You can drill the hole through that and then put a balloon on here and you've got a poor man's airlock. Once you poke a hole through the balloon, that lets the CO2 out of this and a little bit of oxygen in. And this is all tight, so it's not going to blow out. And uh, this is a 1.3 gallon jar, so the wine actually comes up to here. And you've got, so you've got a lot of headroom, a lot of oxygen room at the top, and that's important. So for $5... And the fact that every Walmart carries these, this is a great start if this is what you're looking for. It sounds silly, the balloon, but it actually works really well. It works fine. <laughs> this isn't what we're going to say that you're going to want to do if you do more than, you know, two or three batches of wine. But to start off with, if this is all you have, this will work. So this is just a wide mouth jar with a plastic lid. And this particular one has um, a hole drilled in it um, with a plastic grommet. It came Which that way. You can do that yourself. But you can drill the hole yourself. Yeah, you can do this yourself. Um, and you can use silicone instead of a grommet. And then this tube that we showed you earlier can go. It's probably not the right size for this hole, but it can go right into this hole yeah, right there. It's a tight fit. And then the other end of it, we put it into a bucket of sanitizer to keep bad things from coming up into the wine and also keep this from blowing up as it's fermenting. It allows the CO2 out, but it doesn't let anything through the sanitizer into the tube. This you can get on Amazon. Some of them come in four packs and they're not expensive. And again, you can get these other places. These wide mouth jars probably are carried by Walmart and other chains. Yeah, I would think uh, so. And just drill a hole on the top for the tube or an airlock. Airlock didn't make our S tier because of the fact that you can use tubing like this and a bucket of sanitizer as an airlock. So you don't need to go to the expense and time waiting for Amazon to deliver you a true airlock. It is on our list and it's high on our list. It's just not on the S tier because you don't have to have it. And actually, a lot of times we don't use one. We use this situation. We use this almost every time on the, on the primary fermentation. Mm -hmm. We use blow off tubes instead of airlocks. We don't move to an airlock until after the third or fourth day. This is a narrow mouth carboy. It's uh, one gallon. It's actually a little bit over one gallon. It's like one that's 1.3 ish. Yeah. And so for this one, we use this bung here. It's got a hole in it. Same thing. We put this tube through this hole. You don't have to have this if you can figure out another way. If you've got a lid for one of these and want to drill a hole through it, as long as you can keep it, keep your airlock securely going into the hole, you can get away with, without having the bung. You could actually put a balloon over this mouth. A uh, big balloon. Maybe not. Maybe not the balloons that we have, but maybe. Look at that. Look at that. So yeah. yes, you could do that. <laughs> okay. Again, get an airlock. <laughs> But if you don't have one, you could get away with making a few batches of wine with that one. Yep. The last one we have is a little big mouth bubbler. This comes from a specific vendor that I'll link in the description below. These are nice. They also, the lids don't hold water. So if you shake these, they will also spill water out through the, through the lid. It's only really the only thing I don't like about them. The lid has a small enough uh, opening that you could also use a balloon airlock. If you wanted to, this particular bung does not fit, but you can get a smaller one. I'll link the size that fits into this. This is a smaller opening, so the balloon will work. It would fit really well. You can see that we marked where a gallon is on this, and it's there's a lot of headroom at the top, and that's really nice because if you've got fruit that you're fermenting in the primary fermentation, it's going to give you a lot of room to put the fruit at the bottom and still have some headroom at the top. This also works as a secondary fermenter. So after the primary fermentation is done and you're adding oak, if you're adding oak or whatever infusers that you're gonna add to your wine, it gives you lots of room to do that. On secondary fermentation, the cedron is not as desirable. In fact, it's not, it's not a good thing for the wine. You don't want it to 
be exposed to a lot of oxygen. So if you do use one of these for secondary fermentation, you're going to want to put enough in here to get rid of the headroom at the top. Probably most of the time, a little big mouth bubbler is not going to be a good secondary fermenter because of the headroom at the top. Uh, but for primary, it's great. We actually use these most of the time for our secondary fermentation. Yeah, we, we will siphon the wine from the little big mouth bubbler into the wide mouth jar. This is true gallon. So this much wine in here ends up coming up almost to the top of this. So if you had one of these and one of these, uh, you'd be great. You could get by with just this for primary and for secondary, although this doesn't yeah. give you a lot of room at the top, but you could get by with it. These are not necessarily cheap. And again, the lids are terrible. <laughs> they get stuck. They leak. Uh, I'm not a fan of the lids, but the rest of, the, of the, this unit is nice. And these, some people just have sitting around. I mean, if you, if you buy Carlo Rossi wine, it comes in one of these. Well, uh, that might be Big the only reason that you want to buy Carlo <laughs> Rossi wine. I actually bought some of these from somebody in town that had them on yeah. uh, Marketplace. So sanitized them very well for a very long time. <laughs> but yeah, these are very easy to get. And this could be used as primary and secondary. You just, again, have to figure out how you're going to hook a, an airlock to it or a blow-off tube or a balloon, which we showed you that you can do. So this rounds out our S tier, the tier that we think is required. You're going to have to have something to do your primary and your secondary fermentation in. And what we're showing you here, all of these are valid. Our next tier is the A tier, directly below that. These are things that we think are important, but you can get away without having these things by using other methods. First thing on the list is Star Sand. This is an amazing acid-based brewer's sanitizer. We have a video just on star sand that you can watch. You can get away without using this for a, a short amount of time by using like Dawn antibacterial, but at some point you need to break down and buy star sand. Not the cheapest stuff, but it lasts for a long time. This particular bottle has lasted us a couple of months. Watch our star sand video and you'll see why it's so powerful. We did show you this earlier. It's actually on this tier. We just showed you an option for your airlock. So if, if you've already found another way, you know, with the cork and the balloon, the things we showed you, those will work just fine. Um, by this point, you probably want to have one of these because it incorporates with this, which is an actual airlock. So again, you can get by using balloons or blow off tubes or whatever, but these are not expensive. They're easy to get. So by the time you're focusing on your second tier of equipment that you should be buying, airlock and a hold bung that fits whatever your fermenter is, this is important to get. You can get it at the same time as the S tier too. Nobody's saying that you shouldn't. You should. They're not expensive, but we're trying to categorize these in our order of importance. Obviously, most of you have one of these sitting around. Measuring cup is important. And a funnel. You can get away without these things, that's why they're not in the S tier, but they sure make things easier if you have them. Digital scale, there is a lot of measuring ultimately that needs to be done, especially with your measuring sugar. Uh, you can use a measuring cup, but it's nice to have one of these and they're not expensive on Amazon. They're really a lot cheaper than you'd expect. So we've got a couple of them around the house. Having one of these will save you a lot of time and make you more precise in your winemaking. Okay, so our B tier, we had S tier, superior, A tier, now this is B tier. So these are things that are getting a little bit more adding convenience or adding maybe a more quality product. Again, more so than the, the prior tiers. This showed up, we showed you this in our S tier. By the time you get down to this tier of, of items, we think you pretty much need to have a one gallon wide mouth jug with a hole for an airlock in it. These are, again, they're not expensive, and they come in four packs on Amazon, free shipping, so. And then a little bowl for mixing ingredients makes it a lot more convenient. I mean, you get it more thoroughly mixed up before you put it in to your juice. And I love this thing. It's my favorite thing. The mini whisk, because it makes me feel like I'm actually cooking something, so. And it does a good job. You could use a spoon too, but you could use yeah, you could use a spoon and you could use just a bowl from your kitchen. But these are nice when you can see through them. You can make sure that everything's mixed up. So convenience and again the the quality 
of the wine can be affected if you don't have things mixed up well. pH meter. We have a video on pH, why this is important, but basically measures the acidity of the wine. And it's important to have that in the right range as you're winemaking. A lot of times you can get by without this. With our hobo wine recipe, <laughs> we intentionally do not use one of these. Nope. And the wine still turned out Yeah. okay. It wasn't bad. But if you're going to be a serious winemaker, you've got to have a pH meter and know how to use it. Next is this handy dandy little thing. And I think this is one of his favorite things. When we first started doing this, we were just using the tube that we showed you in the yeah, S tier. The S tier. The reason um, why that that tube was in the S tier is because it can be used as a blow off tube and can be used to siphon from your primary fermenter to your secondary. And it works. That's a pain in the ass. But it's kind of a pain. So this thing uh, will help you start the siphon without you having to put this all down into the liquid or you know sucking it out, God forbid. It's a huge time saver. <laughs> but it's, this works really well. It's really nice to have. So again, this is B tier. You don't have to have this stuff until you're ready for this level of winemaking. You can use the tube. You can probably get away without measuring pH and get lucky enough enough times that you know you're a winemaker without these things. But this adds a lot of a lot of quality of life. And we also use this when we bottle, and we've got a little cool thing that goes with that, so you can watch our bottling video, and you'll see this in use. The last thing is a carboy heater, and this has got an asterisk next to it. You don't need a carboy heater unless you've got wines that you are fermenting that need to be at a certain warm temperature like red wines do and you can't find a place in your house that's going to be consistently that temperature. So you won't need this at all. These are not as cheap as a lot of the items. We use them because our fermenting room is 55 degrees <laughs> and we make Merlots and Cabs and other red wines that need to be around 80 degrees for best fermentation. So we use a carbohydrate to get, get them up to around 77 degrees. If you're not doing red wines or your house is 77 degrees, skip it. For the C tier, we brought out all the big equipment so Julie can't be seen here now. <laughs> we'll get it out of the way quickly because I know you want to see her. No, they don't. That's why we brought it out. Uh, C tier. This is all stuff that is not usually at all necessary. It just can help you either with convenience or maybe a more quality product. First thing is food saver. We use a food saver to degas at various times throughout the wine fermentation and before bottling. Not necessary. You can stir or other things you can do to degas, but we like to use the food saver. So it made our C list. We'll link the food saver video on how we use it. It goes along with this, which is called an aeration wand. After we degas, take the CO2 out of the wine must, the fermenting wine. We use the aeration wand to put pure oxygen back in. So again, the video on oxygen management will let you know how we use this. And I'm going to get this out of the way so that we can talk about the other things. Continuing with C tier, again, these are things that are not normally going to be important. You can get away without them for a long time in your winemaking journey. But these little big mouth bubblers are nice. So at some point, it probably makes sense to break down and buy one. Just don't. Don't shake it. Don't shake it. <laughs> Stir. Works much better. <laughs> That's nice for primary fermentation. And in some cases, depending on what you're putting in your secondary fermentation, if the headroom can be taken care of, these are also nice for secondary. And we have this uh, measuring pitcher on our list. I suppose you could actually just use glass measuring cups that you normally measure. I've got a big four cup one that I use. But this has all the measurements on the side this so you can... goes up to a gallon. goes up to a gallon. You can use this for finding out the exact level of where a gallon is in here. So There's, you can mark your vessels. So you can mark it so you know exactly where it is and there is a video about that too that we'll link over there. And we'll then, try. We can only do five. Okay. Maybe at five already. So <laughs> well maybe we won't link it. <laughs> link there then just go look through our videos. It's there. And then you can use it to measure out your juice also. If you're not using something that's already pre-measured and you know you're going to use all of it, this works good for that. These are useful for anything that needs to be over what a normal measuring cup will do. So measuring out a gallon, I, I actually use this a lot. We get Williams concentrates in five gallon batches. So we'll need to measure out a fifth of that if we're going to just use it for a gallon. So this is nice to do that. It's got the nice big raised letters. It's, these, are, these are nice. But this is C tier. You don't have to get this right away. Work up to it. 
It's not one of the cheaper things on here. You can get several things for the price of what one of these is. So you don't need it to start off with. Another thing I didn't realize was controversial until I posted about it in a winemaking forum on Facebook. <laughs> Glass marbles to offset headspace. Apparently some people think is this is the devil's spawn somehow. But when you are in secondary fermentation, you don't want a large gap of air above the must. So you've got to try to get that gap reduced or your, your wine could oxidize. Glass marbles, when they're sanitized, they're a great way of controlling that. You just keep putting glass marbles in until the level of your liquid gets up to the neck and the problem is solved. These are not expensive. These are lead free. They came from Amazon. I'll link them. There are other ways of offsetting the headroom. You can buy a bottle of wine and pour it into your wine and offset it that way. You can use another batch of your wine to do the same thing, but that seems to be counterproductive because then it's got headspace too. So glass marbles, again, they're cheap. We've got quite a collection and half of, at least half of our We're using a lot of them right now. Are used right now. They're in our secondary fermenters right now. So this is probably about a third of the marbles that we own. I've been accumulating them over time. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, I mentioned this in the last here with the auto siphon. This is what we use for bottling. So this little tip here doesn't start putting liquid out until you press this down. So I put it in the bottom of the bottle, press it down, and the wine goes right into the bottle. And then when I lift up, it stops. So you can stop it when you get to the point where you want to stop it or part way up to just see where your level is. This is really, really handy. It is just a convenience. So you can bottle wine without one of these. This just makes it much easier. So that's why it's on our C tier. You can get by without it. It's a little overpriced probably for the amount of material that there is right there. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot to when it. when you look at the alternative, which is a hose that you pinch off to get the siphon to stop, pull it out, put it into the next one, and try to manage that, this is nice. So that concludes the equipment. Uh, that was the C tier, the least important, least bang for the buck of the tiers. Now we're going to start with the ingredients that we feel are the most important.